All right, so back in this section, we're gonna take a look at analyzing DHP packets. Now, the first time we're just gonna take a look at the door process and that handshake in progress. So we've got our Windows DHP server and we have a Windows 10 client we're gonna be using. To do this and to not have our client crash, because I've actually had that happen in, this, uh, <laughs> in testing this, right? I've actually had to disable the DHP server and that way we can start up Wireshark before the DHP server is enabled to capture things properly. So we're gonna be using Wireshark, which is a protocol analyzer on our Windows 10 client. And uh, because I'm using a virtual environment here, just virtual desktop for these two units, it, it was kind of tricky to get this going right. So this is my second attempt to uh, record the video because it crashed the first time. Now, uh, we wanna capture on that ethernet one interface, okay? And this is basically, we wanna make sure that we should not have an IP address, and if we do, we'll release it real quick. So let's do IP config. And we still have our IP address from before, so we're gonna do our IP config forward slash release. Now, you're gonna see probably a lot more traffic coming through, so you see all that going, hey, what's going on? We just, we just lost our IP address. So you can also see there that 169 address going out, right? All right, so let's, uh, and now we're doing the 169 network broadcast from that's the Microsoft stuff, right? Just trying to allow PC to PC connectivity. And we're gonna do IP config one more time just to see where we're at. Now the other interface will get an IP address pretty quick, but we want this ethernet one to get our actual IP address. So we're gonna come back over here to the server and we're gonna enable this interface. There we go, we're seeing some of those DHP informs, DHP acknowledgements. So if we look at our, and we will examine that in just a second, but if we do our IP config now, oh, we still don't have an IP address yet. Hmm, that's weird. Because it seems like we do have an IP address. Let's go back over to our 2012. Some weird things can happen, I'm telling you, whenever you do two virtual machines like this. Yeah, there's an IP address assigned there. So it's weird that Windows is not showing that IP address but we know it's there so we've got the packet capture of the process let's do this let's do an ip config forward slash renew and this will ask to renew our ip addresses so you see some other traffic flowing through in the back there okay and my machine's reaching out for things and you can see queries looking for specific sites all that kind of good stuff and now there's our uh, ip addresses so we do have, um, as we saw, we did get an IP address after all. So if we do an IP config forward slash all again, we'll see all the details around this. Now, um, Wi-Fi training.net, okay, DHP is enabled, yes. There's our IP address, it's preferred, okay. Default gateway, which is not really theirs, just an example, okay, and DHP server address 10.200.110. All right, so let's go ahead and stop this capture because we should have plenty of DHP packets now. So if we just filter on DHP up here, then we can see all the DHP messages that were sent. Right down here is our discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. So let's take a look at it. We've got our ethernet two and our IP information. If you notice IP, it says right there, it abbreviates. We can look at it right there. No IP address, destination was broadcast, and this was a DHP discover message. So if we pull down that message, you can see it was a boot request, and we, were, we gave the client MAC address uh, in that field, and then you've got all these options that are here, okay? There's a DHP message type, which says, hey, we're a discover message. There's a the client identifier, which gave the MAC address of the client in that DHP discover message. The requested IP address, so I'm actually requesting a specific address, okay? the uh, host name, and remember this is a discover, but that's the IP address I had last time, okay? That's why it's preferred. And then we've got these vendor class identifiers like we talked about. So this is Microsoft 5.0. We can tell it's for a Microsoft machine, and we've got a parameter uh, request list. So I'm looking for a mask, I'm looking for a router, DNS server, I'm looking for a router discovery, NetBIOS server. 
I'm basically looking for all this stuff. Windows clients are configured to ask for a lot of stuff because, you know, if you're using Wins, if you're using some of the classic Windows services, then that's the reason why the Windows client is trying to request that from the DHP server. All right, so then we get an offer. And if we kind of look through this, let's close our options. And now you can see how big of a deal options are with DHP. And a lot of people don't realize that along with vendor classes and unique vendor options and all that kind of good stuff. But again, here's the offer from the server. So the client address is not completed yet, but it's telling you, uh, you should use this client address, which is gonna be 10201.11. The next server IP address that you're using is the 10201.10. So you're going directly to the server, basically. There's no relay agent address that we used here because these guys are basically on the same segment. Now, down here, you've got the uh, message type is offer, the mask, and then there's also a lot of other options like 58 and 59, okay? So the renewal time, you can see here is 12 hours, okay? Rebinding time is 21 hours. The lease time is one day, okay? The DHP identifier uh, server, okay? There's the router ID that we handed out, the DNS, the domain name, you'll be able to see Wi-Fi training.net, okay? And then we also handed out that WINS server information as well. So that was handed out as part of that pool that we created earlier. So that's the offer in which we get a request message back that says, okay, yeah, we would lock that request. And we send this back and because we're in the same segment, again, no relay agents required. We've got the client identifier again and we've got the option 50 requested IP address. So this says, hey, this is the address we are requesting. You've offered it, we'll take it. Here's my host name, okay? And then there's all those options that we already learned about. Finally, we get the DHP acknowledgement saying, yes, this is your IP address. You get the renewal time, all those different details we already looked at. And he finally just confirms that, yes, you got the IP address, you're good to go. So that is one of the great things about protocol analyzers because we could see what's actually in the packet. Now, we talked already about that whole door process, but that's actually what's in the packet. And then you'll also see other messages like those acknowledgments and informs later on, right? So informs are a little bit different and they can be used for a lot of different things. So in this one, it's just saying that client IP address is 10 and I'm not using relay agents or anything. Um, there is a DHP message in form and I'm, I'm telling about vendor specific information and that's pretty much it. So pretty cool stuff um, that you can do with protocol analysis and we've looked at the four-way handshake, the Dora. We're going to look at a little bit more in a second. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next.